In this video, I spent another 100 days in my custom mod pack, built to simulate life in the late 19th and early 20th centuries during an event sometimes known as the Second Industrial Revolution. With this video, the total days spent in the mod pack is brought up to 300. If you haven't seen the first 200 days in this series, I'd highly recommend watching them before this video if you want to have context for everything that's going on. Before we begin, here is a brief refresher for the most recent 100 days. I extracted tons of oil, built several excavators, crafted an infinite pollution filter, built a train station, and made plans for a 3,000 block long railway. The challenges in the mod pack include hunger, thirst, temperature, weather, zombies, pollution, more pollution, and radiation. If you want to play this mod pack for yourself, you can head on over to Curse Forge using the link in the description. Big thank you to all my patrons, your support helps a lot, what with YouTube's ever fluctuating ad rates and algorithm. If you want to support me directly, that's a great way to do so, and you gain access to my private Minecraft SMP server using the modpack featured in these videos, in addition to schematics of my various Minecraft builds. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, then consider dropping a like and subscribing down below. I'm trying to get to 250,000 subscribers, and I need your help. Thanks! Oh hey. You're not supposed to be in here. Nice, I can jump scare myself now. Although I must say I'm a lot more scared of my oil processing stuff and always running out of crude oil, which is why I did some config changes that mean that magically oil veins generate with a lot more oil than they used to. Like 109 million millibuckets of oil. In other words, I can actually do something in this video that's not just constantly looking for new oil veins and moving pump jacks. Wouldn't that be a novel concept? I jump-started the pump jacks again because I'd run out of diesel, so the diesel generators weren't doing anything, and I slowly started making diesel again to put into the generators, only I was having some problems with it. For some reason, it was either glitching out or just not going fast enough or doing something weird that it wasn't before. And I spent several days just trying to figure out what exactly was going wrong with it. As you can see, I almost died. And so I rage quit the game and relaunched it after changing absolutely nothing in the config. And what do you know, it just works out now when I come back. It's actually producing enough diesel for once. Oh, and the diesel generators are producing enough power for once. I made some blueberry sandwiches and decided to go check on all my excavators, which are now able to be run efficiently at the same time. And it turns out I had overflowed my storage for the silt vein. So I decided to make some storage drawers instead to hold all the stuff in. Conveniently, the excavator can now put directly into the drawer controller and then it just sorts it automatically, which is really nice. So I can now hold thousands and thousands of these blocks in these drawers instead of just the single chest. If only I had thousands and thousands of steel blocks because I need an entire chest full of rail segment part thingies, which are expensive to make. It's 20 steel ingots to produce 12 rail segments. So yeah, that's a lot of steel. And late that night, while freezing to death, I planted some cranberries so that I'd be able to make some thankful dinner the next day. For those of you unfamiliar with Pam's Harvest Craft, this is such a good food because it gives me all five nutrients at once with just one food item. It also restores a huge amount of hunger and saturation in addition to giving me strength and resistance upon eating it. And if I really want to, I can eat it whenever. I don't technically have to be hungry, so it's pretty epic. Almost as epic as getting two stacks of cold coke blocks from my automated coke ovens. That night, as I was trying to make materials for yet another excavator, an invasion occurred, so I had to go and deal with that. I tried to exploit the mobs by flinging myself into the air with a black hole again, but it didn't go high enough to make them despawn, unfortunately. On day 7, I assembled my third excavator, pretty sure, over an iron vein that I'd found in the last video, so I can get automatic iron, and with that I'll also get some tin and nickel, I believe, which is less useful, but still a nice bonus. I set up some storage drawers to hold all of the stuff mined from the excavator, like on the silt vein, and afterward I crafted the advanced capacitor backpack with my chest plate to attach it, which is something that I was kindly informed by lots of people in the last video that I did not know you could do, so I appreciate that. I even saw this really cool falling star thingy coming down from the sky, but unfortunately it seemingly burned up before it made it to the ground. The next morning I began getting some building materials together, and I made a deco bench so that I could finally start doing lots of cool prop decorating. Oh yeah, and late that evening I discovered something unfortunate in the ceiling of my factory where there were no pollution vents. It uh, was completely full of carbon and sulfur. Yeah, so that wasn't great, but I decided to just ignore it and go pulverize some more coal in the meantime. I made another garden cloche to grow beetroots so that I can make a red dye for the deco bench, 
and I started experimenting with different window types to figure out which one kind I wanted to use in my building. And what exactly am I building? Well, I'm going to assemble a big brick factory building around a bunch of my immersive railroading machines, and it's going to be modeled after a lot of the old mills that you see scattered around New England. Speaking of mills scattered around places, I wanted to make the sawmill multi-block, which basically just takes logs and makes six planks from each log, and you can also get extra sticks from each plank. But the problem is, is it needs rotary power, not electric power. So I had to figure out how to do that, which I had never done before in survival. It essentially involved attaching some wheels and conveyor belts to a windmill, and then trying to figure out how to hook that to the sawmill itself while still getting enough speed and torque. After screwing around with it for several days, I eventually figured out how to connect it properly, and I was able to start turning my logs into even more planks, and then turning those planks into even more sticks to make frame blocks. I spent over an in-game week working on building my new structure, while also trying to not freeze to death at the same time, which was extremely annoying. I eventually resorted to occasionally sitting in between two heating coils in front of a pool of lava. This seemed to work somewhat okay, but it didn't do much good when I had to leave my base and go exploring to find some more materials. Specifically, I was exploring for limestone, but I also got to blow up a pirate ship on the way there. Eventually, I got to the limestone deposit that I wanted and was able to get a bunch of it. When I came back, I realized I had a lot of levels and I did some enchanting, and I got some cool enchanted books mainly for swords. I was able to get Vorpal and Leech, which is pretty cool. But after that, it was right back to painstakingly building using lots of framed trap doors. We all know how fun that is, but it creates a very nice effect, so it's definitely worth the trouble. I just slowly made progress the next few days building while trying not to freeze to death or get flung around by tornadoes or die of dehydration or mobs. It's just a whole thing, so it makes building relatively slow, especially when you start to run out of building materials. On day 22, I took a break from building and started making a bunch of rails from steel that had been slowly being smelted while I was building before. Then I went to the nether to try to feel warm again after spending so long of dying of hypothermia. Hypothermia, by the way, not hyperthermia. There's two different things. I figured that while I was in the nether, I may as well get some more magma blocks and magma shards to turn into, you guessed it, more heating coils. Upon returning from my vacation to the nether, I decided it was time to make some automatic turrets. The biggest challenge with that was that I did not have any circuits. I had not made any circuit boards yet. And circuit board making is not easy because you need some fancy machines. You need a fancy assembler to make the electronic parts. And you need to make etching acid to etch the circuit board to begin with. The etching acid takes several steps to make. You first have to make brine in a mixer from salt and water. Then you stick the brine in an electrolyzer, and you get hydrogen and chlorine from the brine. And then you take the chlorine, and you mix it with pulverized iron, pretty sure. And that's how you get the etching acid. So it's a multi-step process that requires several different machines. I started by making the electrolyzer and trying to set up some of the other stuff, but of course we have an invasion, so that's always cool. After fighting off the invasion, I continued trying to make the mixers that I need, because I need two mixers to do it most efficiently. I got a bunch of salt from my kitchen, which I can just produce infinite of, and I started making brine in my mixer. After getting a bunch of brine, I threw it in the electrolyzer and began to produce chlorine and then the hydrogen gas as a byproduct. I set up my second mixer and threw in my chlorine and some pulverized iron into it to make etching acid. The first thing I did with my etching acid was dump it on the ground and stand in it to see if it would hurt me, which it did. 10 points to Gryffindor for realism. In the middle of the night, I went up to the roof of my factory building and decided to break it to let all of the pollution out because I was concerned that trying to filter it inside the factory would just cause a gigantic explosion instead. And I didn't really feel like filling in a giant crater. After lighting it out, I had a huge cloud of pollution in my sky. It was really weird. All throughout the next day, I noticed that I wasn't regening any health despite eating somewhat regularly and also having full hunger and saturation. I was trying to figure out what the problem might be, but I got a little bit distracted at the tragic death of everyone's favorite merchandisable bowling ball. The next day I built some of the second floor of my factory building before deciding to run into a high voltage power line to see if that might help me regenerate health. Well, first off, it didn't, as you might expect. 
but I was hoping that after I was all done with that, I might start to regen health again normally, which I did for a brief time. And so I just did some building, but then the problem came back. And as you can see here, I'm not regenerating health. I even tried sitting in my spring water, my hot spring water, and it didn't regenerate either. It was all very strange, so I was just trying not to die, because I figured it was probably some weird mod compatibility thing, but I didn't want to relaunch the game quite yet. I made a pollution pump, some pollution pipes, and some filters, so that I could begin taking that giant cloud of pollution out of the sky, the one that I let out of my factory roof. I got that all set up, and filtering the carbon, I don't really care about the sulfur, there's not very much of it, and it, you really have to have a ton of sulfur for it to become a problem, so most of the time I don't even filter it. I kept filling in the windows in my new factory building, but I was running out of my bricks because the bricks are actually made with dirt to make them stained. And for some reason I was running out of dirt. I know that might be hard to believe, but yes, I had to go purposefully mine dirt <laughs> just as a building material. Having to do parkour to place every single window made it relatively slow going. But little by little I finished the exterior of my new factory building. Late one evening when I was on the brink of death, I finally decided to relaunch my game and figure out what was causing my health to not regenerate. And I solved it. It was a weird config thing with a new mod that I'd added. But now, it was all fixed and I was able to go merrily on my way. On day 32, I used up the rest of the bricks that I had already for building, and the rest of the day I just spent casting rail segments. The next day I checked on the big pollution cloud that I was filtering and I saw that half of it was gone, so I moved the filter over to where the rest of the cloud was so that I could keep getting rid of it. I spent a bunch of time and a bunch of resources making the blocks for several multi-block machines, specifically the precision assembler for circuits and also the chemical bath for circuit boards. Since there was an invasion, I stayed up all night assembling my machines and trying to stop zombies from tunneling underneath my buildings. I made the precision assembler first and got that all set up and then I made the chemical bath, which looks really cool. Both of these machines actually have really nice animations, which we'll see in a sec. The next day I made some of the accessories that I needed for the precision assembler, mainly the actual blueprints and schematics for parts, and the assembler tools, which you have to swap out depending on what you're making. You can see here I just stick them into those slots and then they appear in the model, which is pretty nice. Once I figured out how to actually make the machine start crafting, I worked on making some basic electronic components from vacuum tubes, nickel plates, and redstone dust. And it even goes through a full animation here, which I will speed up so that you can see it. And there we are, there's my basic electronic components. I can use those to make an engineer's blueprint, which will allow me to make these circuit boards. Now that I had the circuit boards, I could go dump them in the chemical bath once I filled it with etching acid. And this machine even has a really cool animation where it's got a little claw arm and it drags it through the acid. After making a few more electronic components, I was finally able to make my first circuit board. And on day 36, I made my first turret, a chem thrower turret. In other words, it's a flamethrower. That's the part that matters. As far as I know, I could just use creosote oil or gasoline or something like that. But I wanted to make actual napalm. So I got some gasoline and stuck it in a mixer combined with aluminum grit. And apparently that makes napalm. I waited to get a full metal barrel with 12 buckets of napalm in it before taking it over to the turret. I tried to test it out that night, but then I realized I'd forgotten to get redstone power, but once I got the redstone power, it definitely fired lots of napalm at the zombie before running out of power because I was powering it from a wood bill, so I had to swap out the power source for future use. All I did the next two days was just cast rails from tons and tons of steel was a fairly monotonous task, made slightly better when I realized I could use an extracting conveyor belt to take the gigantic rail casts out of the casting basin. Not that I left myself very much room here to properly do it. I only have my past self to blame for that though. Eventually I got to about two thirds of the rail segments I would need before I went and made a bunch of framed blocks. But then of course, whenever I try to go building stuff, a blood moon or an invasion happens. In this case it was a blood moon, so I spent more time killing mobs than actually building that evening. But on day 40, it was right back to placing down framed trap doors in endless columns. Now I would just like to present myself with a certificate declaring me the best block clutcher in all of mod and Minecraft. That's kind of what my building looks like now when it's mostly done, at least mostly done in terms of what I'm going to do in this entire video. 
I went underground to get some obsidian and to look for slate. The specific slate that you get from Rustic, I believe. So I was going to turn it into roofing tiles, which look really nice. Unfortunately, slate doesn't generate in very large quantities underground, so it took a little while to get enough of it. I did find this really cool marble structure from Astral Sorcery that was underground, and it had this weird regenerating block that often spawned ore, and I could just keep mining it and it just keep refilling with some new type of ore. I'd never seen this before and it was really cool, I got some neat stuff from it. Then I set off the biggest pollution explosion I've ever created, because I realized I was in the ravine where I had killed a bunch of mobs during an invasion in the very first video, and tons of pollution had gone up to the ceiling from all the death. In other words, all it took was one torch to blow up a ton of stuff, including accidentally blowing up the astral sorcery structure, which was very sad. I say that I got enough slate, which I thought I did at the time, but I realized I actually didn't, so I, instead of looking underground, decided to go and look above ground for more slate to turn into the roof tiles. I even went so far as to make a motorboat and make all of the various upgrades for it, so that I could go to an even farther away mountain biome easily and look for slate. Which is exactly what I did on the evening of day 44. This icebreaker bow is pretty sick. It does exactly what you'd expect it to, and it's very satisfying. I did come across little bits of slate. It's a little unfortunate, it only generates in small pockets, but after enough of them, I got several stacks. I even went farther afield and explored some new areas on day 45 and found a bunch of penguins, which are pretty cute. I even discovered that I could pick them up the same way that you can pick up tile entities. Somehow, the game let me get into the boat while holding a penguin, which I'm not going to question, I'm just going to say that's pretty awesome. So I decided to try to take the penguin back to my base and keep it somewhere as a pet. But the game had other ideas for me and my penguin. I keep unlearning the number one rule of Minecraft, and not that you shouldn't dig straight down. For me, the number one rule is never try to take a pet, because it will always die. At the very least, I did finish my factory building, at least to the extent that I'll do it in this video, after a couple iterations of the tower. Then I discovered that my chests that had been holding slag from my blast furnaces were full, and so I had to break them and figure out what to do with the slag. The solution turned out to be a storage drawer as you might expect. I made quite a few more thankful dinners on day 48. I'd just like to point out that you can watch that stuff cooking in the oven and it will change color. That's really awesome. And I decided to move the excavator that had been mining iron to a different vein. I still wanted to mine iron, but I realized that I could stick it over a different type of ore vein that contained iron so that I could also get tungsten. I'd been finding tungsten super rarely underground and I needed it for more and more advanced machines and parts and stuff, so I figured it might be a good idea to switch out my excavator for a different vein. Instead of giving me iron, tin, and nickel, the new vein gives me iron, tin, and tungsten, I think. On day 50, I used my meager amount of steel to make a correspondingly meager amount of rail segments, bringing me to only about seven stacks of rail segments away from my goal. Then I tried to make an eye of ender to make an ender chest, only to realize that I had changed the recipe for that to something that requires magic, so I figured it was about time to get into a little bit of magic with astral sorcery. Once I got the astral tome, I checked out all of the different things I could start with so I could figure out what to do the next day. On the morning of day 51, I set out to explore the nearby lands to see if I could find some astral sorcery structures. Mainly, I need to find one that had a floating crystal underneath of it. Unfortunately, not all of them do. But eventually, I came across one in the desert nearby that did have a little underground area with the flowing crystal. After sticking a crafting table next to the crystal, I was able to make the resonating wand with some of the materials I had. When I got back to my base, I made a full chest just for magical items, and I set back out later that evening to go get more marble and also look for rock crystals, which I was able to locate by holding the resonating wand while it was nighttime and it would display some particles above ground where the rock crystals are. After I got the rock crystals, I went back to the little structure with the crystal, and I made the luminous crafting table, which I then used late that night to craft some illumination powder. The next morning, I made some pyrothium dust, which I needed to use with titanium to get titanium ingots. And I needed those titanium ingots along with thorium to make black iron ingots. 
The black iron ingots are used in crafting components for extended crafting tables along with lithium and luminescence. And the reason that I needed the illumination powder was so that I could make the luminescence. After a day of crafting, I finally made the basic crafting table, which is the same size as regular crafting tables, but certain recipes are only available in this table, such as the recipes for diamond and crystal chests, which is why I was trying to make the whole thing to begin with. I made some panzer glass, got the diamond chest, and then turned it into a crystal chest, and then proceeded to break a bunch of my other chests so I could swap them out with the much bigger, fancier chests. The next two days I made parts for my train tracks, specifically the rail segments, which I had almost all that I needed of, and I also had to make a bunch of treated wood, because you need almost an equal amount of treated wood as you do the rail segments. I had saved up a ton of creosote in a big tank, so I wasn't lacking on creosote, I was just actually lacking on the planks. I made as many planks as I could with what I already had in the sawmill, which definitely helped. I turned a ton of it into treated wood, but I had to go back to the big tree forest. I think it's like a fir tree forest or something. I forget what the actual name of it is, but I got a ton of logs from those trees there and stuck them in the sawmill. And by day 56, I was only about a stack away from getting all my rail segments, and I had about half of the treated wood that I needed. It greatly helped when I discovered how to automatically remove the sawdust from my sawmill because I was clogging it up and shutting it off after a certain point. So, with the discovery of that, I was able to let the sawmill run indefinitely. Except, of course, when the saw itself broke and I had to make a new one, but at least I had plenty of tungsten by that point. What I didn't have very much of, though, on day 57 was steel, but I did have all of the rail segments I needed. I had a full storage crate or chest full of the segments and almost all the treated wood I needed. But I was still waiting for a little bit more of the wood, so I moved my pollution pump over to the diesel generators to try to get rid of some of the perpetual giant pollution cloud that's over there. Right on cue, had some acid rain, so that's pretty cool. By the end of that day though, I did end up with almost all the treated wood that I needed. I even had a little bit extra, so I decided to make a bridge over part of the river, which I had been putting off doing for a long time. On day 60, it was time to begin building my 3,000 block long railway. Right after, I made a few extra diamond tools that would uh, make my job a lot easier. And if you're wondering why I kill almost all vanilla animals I come across, it's because they're spawned from invasions, and when it's nighttime, they usually become hostile again, so it's just a big pain. I did notice that my pollution pump had made a pretty significant dent in the cloud. That very first day of building, I really got almost nothing done, as I spent most of it trying to figure out how to properly use the golden spike for the little schematic blueprint things of the rails. And then there was an evasion, so I had to spend the whole night fighting mobs, which was not fun. In between killing spiders, I did accidentally manage to fill in the rails, not the correct way you're supposed to do it, but I don't think, given what I learned later, but I did manage to do it somehow. <laughs> it wasn't until the next morning that I really started making some serious progress on the rails. I managed to get finally out of the birch forest and into this little biome that was all like small rolling hills, which is not particularly convenient for rails that aren't going to go up and down constantly. The next time I had to do a custom curve, I struggled for a really long time to figure out how to make the schematic actually place down the railway. I kind of feel dumb in retrospect. But it took me like a solid Minecraft day just to figure out how to make it work. I eventually realized that you had to, I think, control left click on the spike to break it. I just held down shift and control at the same time just to make sure.
The blood moon on day 68 forced me to retreat back to my base, which was alright though, because I need to restock on some stuff. I made some extra rail segments on day 69 because it seemed like I was using too many of them. And I warmed up my train, which pretty much took all day, and decided to bring it with me when I returned out to the track that I was working on. I even discovered the great thing about the train is that it will make the tunnel for me. <laughs> if it's not high enough ceiling already, it'll just break the blocks and it doesn't seem to hurt the train. On day 85, after spending a quarter of the 100 days just working on my railway, I completed it. All 3,000 blocks of it. It's all set and ready to go for the nuclear age whenever I want to use it for that. I had to evacuate the area though because I was dying of frostbite and a tornado showed up right over the train, so that was problematic. But I got to have a very nice scenic train ride all the way back to my base. On day 86, during a full lunar eclipse, which was extremely cool looking, I immediately refilled my train with coal and water and took it back out on the railway to ride it all the way back to the mountain biome just for fun so that I could experience the journey all at once instead of in little parts. The only problem is I eventually reached a part in a forest biome that was completely blown up. You see there had been a tunnel there but what happened was that the train was parked too long in the tunnel and it created a bunch of pollution and it must have exploded the tunnel at one point or another after I had already gone through it the previous night on my way home. So. I had to go all the way back to my base without the train because it was stuck to get some stuff to repair the tracks and then I had to go all the way back and fix the tracks and then move my train along again and finish the ride that was supposed to be all at once but ended up not working out. I'm not going to show the entire train ride from my perspective in this video since it would probably be boring but if you want to see it there is a link to an unlisted video on my channel where I just uploaded the full train ride if you really want to see it and are interested. The very last thing I did late that night when I went back to my base was make some multi-block components for 
another excavator. An excavator that I needed to use to mine some uranium. Because I need to unlock the nuclear age, and that requires collecting 175 uranium blocks all at one time. I recently added a few new ore veins to the mod pack, which you can get with the excavator. You can see some of them here. And some of them give you uranium, like this one vein that I found called Pitch Blend. The only problem is that once I assembled the excavator, it barely managed to get enough power, but it wasn't mining anything. It was just digging up nothing, so I had to go and get some help from some kind people on my Discord server who helped me figure it out, and we got all the config working so that the excavator was actually mining the stuff it was supposed to mine instead of just nothing. In other words, at that point, I was able to get automatic uranium, and it was only a matter of time until I got the 175 blocks that I needed. But obviously, I wasn't just going to sit around and do nothing while I waited for the excavator to mine, so I worked on building up some of the riverbanks near my area, near my base. After not even that long, there was already about 600 uranium that the excavator had mined, which was almost enough on its own to get me to unlock the nuclear age. On day 93, I got a schematic of a new building that I designed in creative mode, which will be my house once I assemble it. The only problem is that the schematics from building gadgets do not save tile entities, meaning that probably about a third of my house is not there because I used a lot of framed blocks and then deco craft props and then architecture craft like design thingies. So only about two thirds of the house is actually there, but you can see this is essentially where it will go and what it will look like. I designed it to exactly fit the shape of the land that I already had laid out. And I think it'll be really cool once I can actually get it up and it'll be nice to just move out of my train station into a real house. I figured that I may as well go get the building materials that I needed. So I started with the andesite, got a lot of that. When I came back, I found that I had a lot of uranium. Keep in mind, I'm pulverizing the uranium ore, so I'm doubling what I get in terms of actual ingots. I made a bunch of sandy blocks and I collected the jasper that I already had, which was unfortunately nowhere near enough of what I would need for the whole building. So I had to go back to the desert and find some more jasper, which is not too hard to do. And I'm especially proud of myself for managing to do it without irradiating myself even more because of that uh, little nuclear fallout biome next to the desert. My horse and I, we did get to see a big sandstorm though. There was an invasion that night and it ended up being safer just to continue riding my horse in random areas so that the mobs that spawned would never really be able to catch up with me. Eventually I realized that I'd ridden around what I thought was a big ocean and now in reality seems just like a lake. And what did I find on the other side of that lake? Well, I found this military outpost, of all things, and it spawned an attack helicopter, so I ran away. But then I went back because I wanted to shoot it with my railgun, because the railgun does a huge amount of damage, and I might be able to kill the helicopter if I was lucky. Apparently, I was lucky, or the helicopter was extremely bad at its job, because it, it kind of followed me, but it never shot at me, and so eventually I blew it up, and it was pretty cool. It even dropped some fancy cybernetics and other stuff. On day 97, I collected a bunch of miscellaneous blocks that I needed smaller amounts of for my house, and I discovered, to my embarrassment, that in my attempts to speed up the processing speed of my metal press, I, in fact, slowed it down by several factors of, I don't know, I just, I slowed it down a huge amount when I meant to speed it up by a huge amount, so that was fun. I still got the lead plates that I needed for my lead sheet metal in the end, it just was a little bit more annoying than I expected. On day 98, I started turning my uranium ingots into uranium blocks to see exactly how much I had. And it turned out that I had 163 out of the 175. When I went back to the excavator, it had stopped digging stuff up again. But for a different reason this time, when I checked the ore vein, it said there was nothing there to mine. And I don't think it mined 38,000 ore already. <laughs> Unless I'm going insane. But I did have enough uranium ore left over with what I had just gotten from the excavator and what was already being smelted and pulverized that I did manage to make my 175 blocks of uranium, thus completing my quest and unlocking the nuclear age. It was a time of both great celebration and great sadness as I realized that I made the recipe for the portable temperature regulator too difficult for me to make in this video. On the morning of day 99, I completed the first actual quest in the nuclear age quest lines and i remember that i could finally use my rat away now it's no longer locked so bye bye radiation here you can see i sped up this footage where i went through and completed all of the prerequisite quests in the main questing tree so that i can go and do a bunch of stuff in all the other quest book tabs now 
There are a lot of weapons that are unlocked <laughs> now that I'm in the nuclear age. And so I figured that I would spend the rest of that day just making the Thompson SMG so that I can finally be on a slightly more level playing ground with all those zombies and skeletons that spawn wielding guns. The first poor miscellaneous random zombie that I came across that night got to feel the full force of my retribution for 300 days of suffering. Oh hey, it's now day 100, or should I say, day 300. Essentially 300 days in the Industrial Revolution. And I'm happy to say that it has only taken 300 days for me to get a house. As you can see here, this is pretty much all of the housing stuff that I can do with my building gadgets. The rest of it I have to go and fill in by hand, which I'll do in the next video. But hey, that's it for the Industrial Revolution. I've had a blast, I hope you have as well, and I'm looking forward to the nuclear age. The next video will begin the nuclear age journey, and you can be sure I'll be making full use of that newly completed railway to the Alps. Oh, and one last thing before I forget, here's a little sneak preview of what my house looks like with all the fancy tile entity materials. Again, if you're excited for this series and want me to spend 400 days on this world, then don't forget to drop a like and subscribe down below. That's all for this video. Have a good one, everyone. See ya!